where do we draw our lines? Where do we say no? We can't give without boundaries. We can't be open without boundaries. We can't be tolerant without boundaries. That is insane. That is a completely nonsensical, mentally ill, lunatic position that does not serve you. And it wouldn't matter if you never met an abusive person in your whole life. You would still suffer terribly if you lived according to those principles and those coordinates. No boundaries, no sense of self, no capacity to ask for what you want, no capacity to assert what you want as an individual, no capacity to say, no, I'm not doing that, or no, I disagree with you. Two plus two equal four, not five. These things are important. So even if you don't think that you are a codependent, and you might not be, I don't actually think that being a codependent is a thing. I don't think it's um, a personality disorder in the way that other personality disorders are. It is not permanent, pervasive, and personal. It doesn't show up again and again across contexts, typically. Codependency seems to be actually a pattern of behaviors triggered in very particular circumstances by particular people, particular figures, particular contexts where we have a weakness for it. And in that sense, that trigger induces a state in us, much like the concept of Eckhart Tolle's pain body or the Pete Walker, Judith Herman concept of the emotional flashback, where you, go, you get triggered and you go into that state and suddenly you start acting with a different set of moral coordinates. Your perceptual filters shift, bend, soften, even disintegrate for a period of time and then they come back once you're out of that context or you're away from that person. This is a concept that I talk about in greater depth in the new course, which is called Summoning the Self. The way in which certain people, certain contexts, certain issues trigger this people pleaser, hyper agreeable, hyper empathic, boundaryless giving, classically codependent response, submissive, fawning, boundaryless response. And that weakens all of us. It endangers all of us as individuals. It does not serve you to have that as a pattern of behavior that shows up again and again in your life. Even if you never meet an abusive personality, the big bad wolf, the big bad narcissist, borderline, histrionic or psychopath, and God knows you have no chance living in this world that you'll never run across people like that. But even if you didn't run across people like that, your life would still have moments of tragedy, catastrophe and suffering in it that it otherwise wouldn't if you could say no, if you knew what you wanted, if you could ask for what you wanted, if you could defend your boundaries, if you could defend your sense of self, if you could have a mission and a purpose and act in accordance with that mission and that purpose, in accordance with your highest values in thought, word and deed, unconsciously, consistently over time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. And I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Cheers.